Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about heat-related illnesses which can affect our body. Heat-related illnesses arise from inability of physiologically thermoregulatory mechanism to compensate for the rise in body temperature due to elevated external temperature or extracorporeal temperature when it is combined with high humidity and also with physical exertion or accelerated metabolism like drugs which accelerate metabolism, conditions which accelerated metabolism like anemia, thyrotoxicosis, all these things. Heat stroke is characterized by a core body temperature more than 40.6 degree Celsius or 105.1 degree Fahrenheit. With CNS dysfunction like altered behavior, seizure, coma and all. It can also lead to multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. Like any other major illness, here also multi-organ dysfunction syndrome occurs. Heat exhaustion is a mild to moderate illness due to loss of sodium and water during the heat exposure. That is very important. Initially, we lose large amount of water and salt from our body through sweat. That will lead to heat exhaustion. Heat cramps are excise associated involuntary muscle contractions that is classically occur when we are working in a high temperature zone. You can see that after sometimes muscle cramps, severe muscle cramps occur uh, due to again due to electrolyte water loss. Heat syncope is transient loss of consciousness or collapse during heat exposure. It can be due to vasodilatation, it can be due to volume loss. Both can produce syncope. Heat trash or prickly heat, that is a common thing what we see in routine patients in OPD. So that is a common presentation of heat induced skin injury. You can see small blisters uh, or inflamed lump over the skin or skin rashes can be there. We can see the uh, risk of uh, heat related illness, demographic factors like very young child or very old patient, both can have heat induced illness very fast. Lower socioeconomic status means uh, the most of these uh, patients who is having lower socioeconomic status, they may not be working in a AC room or inside house. Most of the time, they'll be working outside in high temperature zones. Inadequate air or inadequate air conditioning system. So if you are not working inside, uh, then most of the time the patient may be working an external area where there is no uh, covering uh, like patient may not be working in a tent or in a residential area so patient can expose to higher degree of sunlight and temperature occupational and recreational activities or severe exercise in hot and humid environment that also can produce heat related illness. Patient who is having psychosocial illness or mental illness can also develop uh, heat related illness because they may not notice the problems produced by the heat. Again like alcoholic patients also can have this type of problem. Some drugs also can increase the risk of hyperthermia like a patient who is having, uh, who has taken high dose of aspirin or amphetamine can also have uh, hyperthermia induced problem when they are exposed to severe sunlight. Heat stroke is defined as a body temperature more than 40.6 degrees Celsius or 105.1 degree Fahrenheit due to environmental heat exposure with lack of body's thermoregulation. It is also associated with central nervous system dysfunction. This also can lead to multi organ dysfunction. That is very important. High degree temperature that is not controlled by the thermoregulatory center in our body and patient is having altered behavior, multi-organ dysfunction. Now, if you see the difference between fever and this one, fever definition is an elevation of body temperature above the normal circadian range as a result of change in the thermoregulatory center located in the anterior hypothalamus. So, here there is no uh, 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 like uh, thermoregulation occurring in our body in heat uh, stroke but whereas in fever is a 
regulation occurring in the thermoregulatory center. Its body is on regulation. Here it is an external uh, temperature which uh, is not compensated by thermoregulatory center. Types of heat stroke, it can be classical heat stroke, passive hyperthermia resulting in impaired heat dissipation and persistent heated environment usually takes many days. Exceptional heat stroke, hyperthermia associated with physical activity in an uh, area where there is high degree temperature or high humid uh, environment usually develops faster than the classical variety. You can see here heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Heat stroke you can have headache, confusion, elevated body temperature. There is no sweating uh, in the body when the patient admitted with heat stroke because patient had, uh, had lost almost all fluids from the body. So the sweating amount is reduced. Rapid strong pulse, initially it will be strong then later it will become weak pulse. Initially rapid pulse which is strong or normal then it will become rapid and thready pulse because of the fluid loss. Nausea, vomiting, red hot skin with rashes over the skin and patient can have lose his consciousness later multi organ dysfunction can occur. Heat exhaustion, mild to moderate illness due to loss of salt and water that is very important. In heat stroke also patient will be losing uh, water and salt but uh, it, it occurs in severe degree. Core temperature may low, normal or high. Symptoms vary uh, and can include fatigue, tachycardia, profuse sweating, nausea, vomiting, weakness with central nervous system involvement. Heat syncope, elevated core temperature and uh, associated with uh, loss of consciousness and patient collapses. Immediately after collapse patient may get up because the cerebral circulation will be regained. Most of the time this is due to increased water loss, hypotension and collapse. Other problems like heat tetany, patient can have carpopital spasm, paresthesia, hyperventilation, heat muscle cramps are occurring uh, in when the patient is working or doing exercise in a hot humid climate. Heat edema, dependent edema can produce in many patients. Heat rashes are one of the most common presentation of heat related illness. So patient can have multiple itching, uh, uh, itching red lesions all over the sun exposed areas. Now we can see the risk factors for external heat stroke and heat exhaustion, fever, obesity, low level of physical fitness, lack of heat acclimatization, dehydration, recovering from recent illness especially viral fevers, history of exertional heat stroke, sleep deprivation and there are a lot of other conditions also can induce um, heat stroke in a patient who is having uh, previous illnesses. So these are risk factors uh, that doesn't mean that all patients who is having this problem will develop uh, uh, heat exhaustion or heat stroke and when, when these conditions are associated with heat exposure there is a high chance of heat stroke or heat exhaustion. Now mechanism if you see the most important mechanism is heat related illness are caused by the inability of physiological thermoregulation mechanism to compensate for the rise in body temperature due to external temperature. So whenever the external temperature elevates the body is unable to compensate for that like uh, more sweating and body will try to mo sweat more and try to cool the body but at one point uh, the sweating will be inadequate and uh, it cannot be compensated by internal mechanism. So then the patient will go to the complications of heat related illness. Next one is patient will be losing large amount of water, patient will also lose large amount of sodium, potassium and other electrolytes and that sodium is most important. This loss of water and sodium can lead to hypotension, shock and multi organ dysfunction and a patient also develops a loss of consciousness, seizure and all. So sodium and water depletion is one of the most important 
cause for heat related illness heat rash can occur due to plugging of sweat glands so that can occur in many patients who who is exposed repeatedly to hot temperature symptoms we have already discussed the temperature is very high weakness nausea vomiting headache sinus you know, symptoms like confusion ataxia coma seizures delirium hot dry red skin hyper hyperdynamic cardiac response like patient can have tachycardia hypertension initially then they develop hypotension and shock elevation in the liver enzymes coagulopathy rhabdomyolysis and renal failure so these are the common uh, findings you can see other problems like respiratory dysfunction arrhythmias hypotension all can occur in severe heat related uh, problem patient can have breathlessness bronchospasm uh, ARDS non cardiogenic pulmonary edema cardiac uh, uh, conduction disorders st elevation st depression so many abnormalities can occur in patients who is having heat related illness some patients can have cerebral edema and seizures rhabdomyolysis is very very important especially when somebody is working in hot environment for a long time they can develop rhabdomyolysis this will elevate the creatinine kinase and the increased creatinine kinase can and uh, uh, other uh, muscle related proteins can produce renal failure also so rhabdomyolysis due to any condition can lead to acute kidney injury then patient also develops uh, acute renal failure liver disease disseminated uh, intravascular coagulation almost all types of multi organ dysfunction syndromes can be explained by severe heat related problem now diagnosis mainly history we have to take a detailed history whether where the patient was working uh, how, how long he was working in the hot humid environment all these things are very very important and when we are examining the patient you can see core body temperature is elevated we have to see the rectal temperature to know exactly what is a body temperature heat exhaustion may have temperature that is low normal or high uh, where the main problem is water and salt loss heat syncope also like that you may not see the um, temperature which is high heat only uh, heat um, severe heat exposure hot or uh, 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 heat stroke and all you can see body temperature is high other conditions body temperature can be sometimes normal rectal route is preferred method of taking temperature a rectal temperature is 0.5 degree fahrenheit or 0.3 degree celsius to 1 degree fahrenheit higher than oral temperature so that is normal rectal route is always higher than the oral temperature and uh, it is the accurate method of uh, uh, getting the body temperature another temperatures we can get it in emergency room but they are not accurate so if you want to get the accurate body temperature you have to go for rectal temperature but they, in bc emergency room all these things are not practical so we always go for axillary temperature or uh, oral temperature another important test is creatinine kinase when there is rhabdomyolysis you can see the creatinine kinase will be elevated in our body creatinine kinase indicates rhabdomyolysis if it is more than 5 times it indicates probable rhabdomyolysis levels 5000 10000 units per liter may indicate progression to acute kidney injury because muscle enzymes can go and accumulate in the kidneys and it can produce acute kidney damage so rhabdomyolysis in higher degree can produce renal failure no management we know that uh, it is due to an external warming external hot temperature body reg- uh, body regulation body therm- temperature regulation is failed here so we have to try we have to try to reduce the body temperature by uh, external cooling we can uh, reduce the body temperature by cooling blankets more aggressive cooling can be done by cold water immersion that is very important cold water immersion or uh, patient can be uh, uh, put on uh, water sprays continuous water sprays with uh, uh, mist fan can be tried so we have to stop cooling before normothermic 
or body temperature is achieved because if you keep on do, uh, cooling the uh, body patient may go to hypothermia and its complications so before reaching to the normal temperature itself we have to stop cooling methods that is very very important unnecessarily or we if we over cool the patient it may go to hypothermia and its complication main complication of hypothermia is it will lead to acidosis and thrombosis dic can set in if we over cool the patient there is no need to start on any paracetamol or any other drugs which can reduce the body temperature only external cooling alone is enough salicylates also can sometimes contribute to hyperthermia so they should be avoided dandrolin which is used in malignant hypothermia ca- cannot be used here because it's not a problem uh, which is arising inside the body it is an external problem we have to do only external external cooling should be done additional treatment like uh, patient will have lot of uh, uh, water and sodium loss we have to correct patient's uh, uh, dehydration first of all the dehydration is most important problem of uh, heat stroke large amount of volume might have lost from the patient's body so we have to give uh, iv fluids normal saline is a preferred fluid ringer lactate also can be tried then salt so sodium can be given normal when we are giving so- normal saline that replaces both water and salt and patient may require a higher degree of uh, volume because patient is losing volume from the extravascular compartment and intravascular compartment so depending on the urine output we have to give fluid resuscitation so if the urine output is adequate then we can reduce the uh, water intake otherwise till the patient develops normal urine output that is 0.5 ml per kg per hour we have to rehydrate the patient with normal saline or ringer lactate other electrolytes also should be corrected sometimes patient can have hypokalemia hypomagnesemia hypocalcemia and all and in rhabdomyolysis with renal failure patient can also have hyperkalemia so that also should be taken care now skin rashes should be treated with tropical uh, anti itching medication or uh, patient can be given uh, systemic drugs anti histamines which can reduce Uh, rashes so that also can be tried so we have uh, discussed about heat related illness uh, there are multiple problems patient can have hypotension patient can have shock patient can have syncope patient can have muscle cramps patient can have skin lesions uh, and patient can have heat exhaustion and patient can also have heat stroke in that most important is heat stroke the mechanisms are patient is unable to Uh, counter regulate the problem which is coming from external environment that is higher tem- temperature in the environment initially body will try to regulate it on uh, sweating all these things but later phase when the patient loses large amount of water and salt from the body patient will be unable to sweat at that point of time and slowly patient deteriorates patient develops hypotension shock and uh, altered behavior coma all these things uh, that is heat stroke treatment is mainly external cooling uh, we should not try to give drugs which can reduce the body temperature actually it is not an increase in body temperature from inside it is a, a problem from outside so external cooling is very very important then iv fluids these are the two important things in the patient develops renal failure then also uh, iv fluids are very very important because it's a pre renal failure pre renal failure means kidneys are normal because of the hypoperfusion of kidneys patient developing renal failure so ck is one of the important investigation which can tell you that patient has gone to rhabdomyolysis creatinine is one important investigation which will tell you that patient has developed renal failure thank you